Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. We are finally back on our home water. We're on Clear Lake today and we're going topwater fishing. I haven't been on the water here in months, literally months. And I'm bringing you guys along as we go figure it out. The plan is to throw a buzz bait, a toad, and a frog in search of that topwater bite. Let's go fishing. Now today we're chasing that morning bite, but of course last night sleep sounded more important. So I didn't actually get rigged up ahead of time. So I've got to take a minute. These are the four baits we're going to start with. A bully wah, frog, a toad, and then two different buzz baits. A standard buzz with a quad four blade and a skirtless buzz. That's the plan. Let me get rigged up. We'll get to our first spot. Now this is my first day back on the water and I chose to come out early, almost at first light. There's a reason for that. Today I need to build a pattern. I need to start fresh, I need to find fish as if I've never been on this lake before. So what I've done is I started my day looking for grass. Now granted, this is my home lake, so I've got a pretty good idea where that grass should be. But by going out really early, that is when you get to see what's really going on on the water before the sun comes up. It's just coming up now. Before it comes up, that's when most of the activity in the lake is happening. The bait fish are on the surface. The birds are out chasing bait. Do you see the birds lined up on that bank over there? Those birds are here to eat shad. That's what I'm looking for. That tells me right out the gate, hey, there's bait fish here, and this is a very likely place to start the search for a big bass. First fish back on the home lake. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. He looked big when he ate it. That big large mouth mouth came up out of the water. I've been looking at small mouth for a month. He ate that skirtless buzz. We're just out here in the scattered grass, covering water. And now we're starting to catch fish. This grass is getting thick. Almost every cast I'm picking slime off, I'm pulling grass off. That's why I brought the four different baits. So essentially the buzz bait, the faster moving bait, that's how I'm going to locate fish. I can cover water quickly out on these flats. We both know that I don't have a clue where the fish are right now. I just haven't been here. So from history, I have an idea of areas but that doesn't mean that it's happening in a given spot on a given day. So I have to cover water quickly. The skirtless buzz is the most natural presentation. That's a D walker on the back. I've talked a lot about that. This setup gets a ton of bites, comes through cover well, but it has its limitations. If the cover gets really thick, it doesn't work. I also have that quad blade tied on that plastic quad blade buzz bait. That one has this amazing ability to come up over the top of grass, much thicker than where I can get the standard blade. 
So if that grass gets thicker, I can turn there. It's also ultra subtle. It's a really, really quiet buzz bait, which I like a lot on these glass calm days. Then I have the toad. The toad's job is when it gets even thicker. When you're tired of picking grass, like right now, I switch to a toad to stay right up on top of everything and just plow through it. And then finally the frog. If I actually get into a good number of fish, if I feel like there's a large number of fish in an area, I can slow down, slow walk that frog, and I tend to get a really big bite that way. So that's kind of the idea behind the baits. And right now, I'm gonna switch to the toad, see if it'll get bit, and we'll go from there. Finally starting to see some surface activity. So the plan this morning was to get up early, see the activity, and hopefully find a shallow bite. But either way, seeing the activity was key to see what areas had bait fish in them. When you've got that low light in the morning, you've got a really good shot at catching bass up really shallow. Fish that'll either lock down in the shade midday and they only feed in the morning or fish that literally leave. They pull back out to deeper water once that sun starts getting up. So first thing in the morning, they're up there feeding. I hoped we would get on that today, and we really didn't. The fish that we've caught so far are in outside grass. Outside grass is actually not something I like to do in the morning. So we're here early. What we really need to happen is to let a couple hours pass, let this sun get a little bit higher, because when it gets higher, those outside fish, they also want shade, they also want cover, and they will pull into the grass for the shade and that's when they become really predictable so these offshore fish are actually typically midday fish those dirt shallow up along the bank up in cover fish that's more of a morning thing chasing bait today the morning thing didn't really happen but we did see the birds see them working bait I saw bait fish so I saw the right areas that definitely have fish and I think midday today we're going to get them I believe that that is the fish that I saw originally boil on bait a few minutes ago. I saw one little bait fish come up and then a swirl underneath him. It didn't actually blow up, it didn't even boil. Just a little tiny swirl slowed that frog down to almost a dead stop, just a slow walk. And we got him. And thankfully he gave us two shots because Apparently I was a little rusty. Haven't thrown a frog for a little while. Again, we've been chasing smallies. This is one of my favorite things to do, but this has been a crazy year where I haven't really had the opportunity to do it. Let's catch some more. we'd get one up in shallow cover eventually. Right up on the bank, in the tulies. 
just walking through a cut. Awesome. Man, it's fun to be catching largemouth again. I knew when I was coming back out here that there was no question the first way I was gonna catch them was top water. No matter how long it took me to force feed them. This is one of my favorite bites. So that was what I wanted to come out here and do. And I just love when you start building a pattern and it starts coming together, it starts working and you're able to produce bites on a place that you've either never been or haven't been in months. Come out, put it together, start by looking for grass, start by looking for bait and just build. Oh, he's not as big as I thought. He's just vicious. Man. Oh, he's pretty big after all. Hey, buddy. Thank you. Look at that frog down there. Just munched that thing. Awesome. Oh, that is so much fun. That's why we come out here and do this. Summer fishing with top water on a hot morning. It's a, almost 90 degrees already. It's gonna be in the low 100s today, but those fish need to eat. Thanks, buddy. Little smaller fish, but he had no problem eating that quad blade buzz bait. See that bigger blade? Four blades, but it's plastic. You can go much, much slower and still stay on the surface. You know, a heavier buzz bait, a two blade buzz bait. It all changes speed. You have to go a lot faster to stay on top. But this bait, with that four blade, is moving so much water, it'll go really slow. And then it's got that keeled flat head that also helps it stay up. You can go really, really slow. And it just plain gets. I mean, notice I'm not throwing any trailer hooks today at all. I was a little nervous with this bait because I hadn't put a trailer on it yet, an actual bait on the back. I wasn't sure they'd get the hook right or not. But the benefit of no trailer hook is that you're so much more weedless. You can get in and out of so much more cover without a second hook flopping around. And over on like the skirtless buzz, I never throw these with a trailer hook. Let me get the muck off here. It's just that D walker. I almost never miss a bite because what they see in the water is the swim bait. So they don't miss, they come right up and they eat the swim bait just as if it was a, you know, Kytec on a, an underspin or something like that down in the water column. They just come up and eat it. So they very rarely miss. You don't need stinger hooks in a lot of situations where people are still throwing them. I'm not saying don't throw them, but I'm saying if you get them around nasty grass, string grass, stuff like this. See if I can pick some of it up. This is the grass that I'm fishing. Nasty stuff. Adding a trailer hook will really slow down your day 
because you'll have to pick twice as much grass. So try fishing without before you commit to it. I only go to that trailer hook if I'm missing a lot of bites and I really feel like I need it. Darn it. Got bit, swing and a miss. He only ate the foot. It's actually my second short strike on the dark color. This is hematoma. I saw the bait fish this morning. They were really small. I thought that darker profile early in the day would help me appear smaller, essentially. Uh, not such a big profile in the water, harder for him to find, because the water's pretty dingy. But two short strikes later, I'm going to switch over to that bright, bold white. See if I can get it going with that. No! I wasn't even paying attention. He took both my feet. All right, guys, it's late morning. We're gonna wrap it up here. That was a pretty good first day back out on the water. Uh, we got a limit of fish. We got a really nice kicker fish and we caught them the way we wanted to catch them. I literally only brought four baits today. The lockers are empty, completely empty. So I just grabbed the gear I wanted to throw, got bit on all of it, landed fish on three of the four baits. All the gear, I'll link it down in the video description. The baits, the colors, the rods, the reels. Hopefully you understand why I chose those baits. I'm fishing that stringy grass, fishing offshore, or fishing right up tight to cover. So I needed to be weedless. And then those different baits gave me options on that pattern. And it was a lot of fun. It works. We got to come out here, build a pattern, drop in with months months and months since I've been out here and still piece it together and catch them on top. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.